from Lake Powell and a winner has been chosen for the 100,000 subscriber giveaway Insta360 Twin Edition. But more on both of those things in the next video. Today, Quick Tip Tuesday. And today's quick tip is actually a direct response to at Chris Lost in Florida who asked me, I wanna get off auto as often as possible for photo and video, so I picked up a variable ND filter. My question is what mode is best to put my camera in to maintain the 150th shutter speed, full manual, shutter priority, or aperture priority to best balance shutter speed without needing to adjust the ND too often? Great question, Chris. Today, I'm gonna to answer that by basically just telling you my exact video settings for vlogging on the go. This is what we do. First though, as always, today's episode is brought to you by Epidemic Sound. If you guys are tired of going through boring audio libraries looking for music for your YouTube videos, switch to Epidemic Sound. They have a massive library of awesome tracks and you can try it out for free. First link in the description. Also free is uh, subscribing to this channel. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, totally free. Okay, on to my, my exact video settings for vlogging. This is exactly how I set my camera up when we go out vlogging. And today's settings will apply to any camera where you can set the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Oh, and that you can put an ND filter on. So this works for iPhones, but then you'll need like one of the cases so you can put on a variable ND filter. But you still totally can do this on an iPhone. So even you iPhone users out there, pick up the Moment app. That's my favorite app to film video on my phone with. And then you can adjust all these things in your phone. Yeah, the iPhone, the iPhone's making some crazy good video these days. All right, first up on my settings is my camera is gonna be in 24 frames per second, which is a bit more real to life frame rate. And the main thing that has to do with is motion blur. If, if I wave my hand right now, this video is in 24 frames a second. Do this in front of your face and look at your hand. It's a little blurry. And when you look at my video, my hand is also a little blurry. If this video was being filmed and edited in 30 frames a second, it would it would look more, it would look too smooth. It would look more like sports. So for me, I like 24 frames a second, which means to follow the 180 rule, my shutter speed is 1 50th of a second. Ideally, it would be 1 48th of a second, but most cameras do 1 50th of a second. So with my main three controls of aperture, ISO, and shutter speed, my shutter speed is already locked in. Because of my frame rate being 24 frames a second, my shutter speed is locked in at 1 50th. I've lost that ability to use that to control my exposure. So then I'm left with my other two controls, which is ISO and aperture. My aperture, I like to be a little bit more wide open, so I'm usually somewhere around f2.8 or f4. So somewhere in that range, 2.8, 3.2, 3.5, in there. And with my frame rate at 24 frames a second, with my shutter speed locked in at 1 50th, with my aperture open to f3.2, the last thing that I have to actually control my exposure, brighter or darker, is my ISO. So while we're rocking around, while we're moving, the main thing I'm controlling is my ISO to change the exposure. If it's too bright, I'm gonna bring my ISO down to 200 or 100. If we're indoors and I need more light, I'm gonna open that up to maybe 1600, 3200. Still looks pretty great on the Sonys. But the main issue that most people are gonna face with this whole setup vlogging is too much light. With your shutter speed locked in at 1 50th, your ISO all the way down at 100, you wanna maintain that low depth of field so your aperture is somewhere around 3, 2, 3, 5, even at four. You're gonna look at your exposure in bright sunlight and say, it's, it's still way too bright. So in comes, an ND filter, and what an ND filter basically does is it reduces the amount of light coming through the lens. It's like sunglasses. If you guys have watched this channel at all, we've talked a lot about ND filters. So I'm gonna pop this onto my camera pretty much anytime I'm outdoors. If I'm outside, I, I have this on. And then when I go inside, I take it off. But outdoors, this guy's on there so that I can maintain that 1 50th shutter speed. I can maintain a pretty wide open aperture, have my ISO all the way down at 100, and then mainly control my exposure through the variable ND filter. So as I'm walking around, I'm not I'm not doing a bunch of dial changes. I'm looking at the screen and I'm just twisting the ND filter for, for less light and more light. All of my other settings are staying the same. And if I get to the point where I go all the way down to two stops and it's still too dark, I'll tap and I'll crank my ISO a little bit while I'm outdoors. If we're in the shade or it's a little bit darker. But then again, if I go inside, two stops is too much, I'm just gonna unscrew this entirely and then switch back to just using my ISO to adjust the exposure indoors. So pretty simple, honestly. While I'm outdoors, I'm mainly adjusting my exposure with my variable ND filter. When I'm indoors, I'm mainly adjusting my exposure with my ISO. So with all that said, what camera mode am I in? Manual mode. And while it sounds like manual mode must be more difficult, it actually is better because it gives me more control over the camera and my exposure. For instance, if it was me right now on a very dark background, it would make me automatically brighter. And then if the background was 
lighter, it would make me darker. My, my face exposure would actually change. So as you're walking around outside, if you're in an auto mode or something is on auto on your camera, then as you move and the background changes, the exposure on your face is also gonna change. But in a manual mode, I can get the exposure dialed in just for my face, and then as I move around, doesn't matter what happens in the background, the, the exposure doesn't change. Again, because I am in control of the exposure, not the camera. Now, if you wanna make this even simpler and you don't always wanna be adjusting the variable ND filter, you don't always wanna be adjusting the ISO, one thing you can do is put your camera into auto ISO. So again, outdoors, I'll say auto ISO, I'll get the ND filter dialed in pretty well, and then as I walk around, if it gets brighter, it, it drops all the way to 100, and then if it gets darker, the ISO is gonna bump up a little bit. Again, I'm in that auto mode, so I'm letting my camera do a lot of the work. It, it kind of helps on the Sony's without the flip out screen because you can't see yourself, so if the exposure is changing while you're pointing it at yourself, the auto mode is kind of nice. But if you do have a flip out screen, you can see yourself, it's it's much better to just adjust it manually and then have it locked into the right exposure instead of letting the camera decide. And cameras, as, as fancy as they are and as expensive as they are, ah, they're still pretty dumb. They don't know what they're looking at. They just know how much light is coming through the lens. And because cameras are dumb, that's, that's the main reason why we mostly are in manual mode. They're getting better and better in those auto modes, but in, in general, they still don't know what they're looking at. So for me in my everyday filming, my frame rate is at 24 frames a second, my shutter speed at 1 50th of a second, my aperture somewhere between f2.8 and f4. I've got a two to five stop variable ND filter that I screw on while I'm outdoors and I'm using that to adjust my exposure. And then while I'm indoors, I pop that off and I use my ISO to adjust the exposure indoors. And that's it, quick tip Tuesday. Those are my, my exact vlogging settings. Every video on this channel has been made with, with those settings. This one, this one right now, being made with those settings. Thank you to Chris Lost in Florida for the question. I hope this helped you out, Chris, and I hope this helped you guys out also, everyone else that's watching this. If it did, hit that like button. Maybe uh, think about subscribing to this channel, and again, in the very next video, we will announce who won the Insta360 1R Twin Edition. And I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit more about Lake Powell. Something really cool happened at Powell. Something really bad happened at Powell, but something really cool happened at Powell also. I'll tell you about both of them next time. Huh? Huh?